Dear friends, welcome to this question-answer series presented by Dr. Johnson C. Philip. Dr. Philip has spent his whole life answering young and old on an unbelievably wide range of subjects. His ultimate aim is to help you to find answers to your questions and even doubts. In turn this will help you in multiple ways. Dr. Philip keeps posting question answers regularly. Many of these can be very helpful to you. Do not miss any of them. Please subscribe to our channel and you will get notice of each and every video as it is posted. It is easy to subscribe. Below this video you will see a subscribe icon. Please click it. Please also click to bell icon there to confirm your subscription. That is all. You will never miss any of these life transforming videos. God bless you. It's a great privilege once again to gather in this manner. And uh, today we discuss the most important doctrine in the Christian faith. Actually, though it is so important, often it is not taught in churches. And because of that, there is much ignorance about the doctrine of justification by faith. I will be I propose to present this doctrine in biblical and also historical detail. When I present history, you might feel that it's uh, getting slightly heavy. But please remember, we are here in Brethren Theological Institute, not for a light devotion or we are not here even for a light Bible study. We are here for a medium level Bible school study. Why I say medium level? Because very high technical level is not needed. That is for those people who go into very serious kind of research and other things. I propose to present the doctrine of justification by faith at a medium level that is biblical presentation and also historical presentation. Historical background or historical presentation is needed because of all the doctrines in the Bible, this is the first doctrine that is lost by every reformation movement. In my last two classes, I had reminded you that the Christian community is divided into more than 5,000 denominations. All of them started with justification by faith. Even the Brethren movement in India started with the doctrine of justification by faith. But today we have come to such a high level of doctrinal illiteracy that if we ask 10 people, hey brother, hey sister, what is the doctrine of justification by faith? They will say, well, we heard a lot. But if you ask uh, details, I would not be able to tell the details. This high level of illiteracy has been seen for last 2000 years. Unfortunately, we when I say we, I include myself. We teachers, Bible teachers are most responsible for it because we often forget the importance of this doctrine and we fail to teach it. So let us come to the most important doctrine in the Christian faith. We begin with the key verse on this uh, doctrine and the key verse is found in Romans chapter 5, verses 1 and 2. Romans chapter 5, verses 1 and 2. We read, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God. We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by also by whom also we have access by faith into the grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. That's the entire statement. But the first portion is the key portion. 
therefore being justified by faith what exactly is this justification thanks brother johnson john for posting the reference uh, if anyone here misses the reference those will be available in the comment box and brother johnson john from indore is posting them i am thankful uh, what is this justification by faith i'll first of all i'll begin with a very quick definition very very quick definition but then we will go into elaborate detail because the doctrine is so important that we have to understand it in elaborate detail when a competent authority makes an announcement that a person is not guilty and also that this person is righteous is innocent and righteous that is justification it is not forgiveness we have to understand very clearly justification is not forgiveness a lot of people confuse between justification and forgiveness if a person is forgiven no competent authority can declare that he is not guilty the very fact that he is forgiven means that he was guilty and somebody who is in a position to forgive that person has forgiven his guilt or whatever crime he has done so very clearly we need to understand the difference between justification and forgiveness because forgiveness is something that we all know we all receive forgiveness in our lives and i am sure that there are plenty of mature believers in the audience today who have asked pardon from others forgiveness from others when we ask pardon and when we receive that pardon or forgiveness we are a forgiven party we are not justified the person who has forgiven us has very made it very clear you have done a mistake you have done a crime against me but i forgive you doesn't mean you are innocent it doesn't mean that you are justified that's a very quick very quick definition we will go into a biblical definition point by point justification is a word that is used very often very very often all of us humans have this tendency of justifying ourselves sometimes back i went to a shop it is run by a bill it was run by a believer that's the reason why i went there i went there and asked the fellow standing there do you have a mail purse no no we don't have mail purse finished but since that shop belonged to a believer i did not leave i had much more authority there so i kept on looking at the purse sitting there and finally i found mail purse by mail purse i mean purses used by men to keep money and also to keep all their cards license pan card and this and that because these days some of these uh, original documents have become necessary so you have to keep them with you and therefore there is a kind of purse known as mail purse where men keep money and also their cards and also any other documents uh, i always keep my my insurance card with it because any time i can become sick i can be rushed to the hospital so my insurance identity card is always there as i was walking i saw dozens of mail purses sitting there and i said look at this these are all mail purses and then 
one by one i examined them i found one that i needed and throughout this time the fellow kept on justifying him i thought you wanted this i thought you want that means i said we don't have ma- male purses because i i felt this i felt this i felt this i was fed up with this excuse and i said listen i did not ask you to justify yourself i know very clearly that you do not want to work in hindi if i say you are trying to be a kaam chor it is not expected from you not that i said it in a harsh way i said it in a very loving and gentle way and i said listen you don't want to work your salary salary is guaranteed and your owner is a christian believer and therefore he is not harsh and therefore without working you want your salary i said that is very bad tomorrow i am a believer so i am leaving you tomorrow some very nasty fellow will come and when he has the same experience he will report it and he will see to it that you are terminated from here so be careful so what that fellow what exactly was that fellow doing he was kept there to show items to people he did not want the botheration of working and therefore he just spoke a lie and then when his lie was caught he was trying to say instead of saying sir i made a mistake please apol uh, please i i ask your pardon please forgive me instead of asking for a pardon instead of asking for forgiveness he was repeatedly trying to speak various kinds of lies to show that he is innocent he was not innocent justification is a common human trait we usually call it self justification that's a more common word self justification means a person by using various arguments is trying to prove that he or she is innocent please remember the very fact that we all want to justify ourselves shows that here or there there is something wrong but as i said in my introduction only a competent authority can declare that a person is not guilty please remember declaration that a person is pardoned or forgiven is different from declaration that a person is not guilty and if a person is really not guilty a human judge can declare that he is not guilty but if a person is guilty the maximum that a human judge can do is impose a fine or give him a punishment and when the fine is paid or when the period of punishment is over declare that now that he has paid the fine or now that he has undergone the punishment now he is free and he will no longer be considered as an offender he is no longer an offender why because he is a forgiven offender or a pardoned offender and this happens often this happens often when people make mistakes they pay the fine and then they are not offenders in front of the law i still remember the early days of my car driving when i was following a container truck and when the container truck went i went behind it without realizing that rather than looking at the container truck i should have looked at the traffic light what happened is the moment the container truck was halfway over the traffic light became red and since the container truck is so long i who came in my car i came to the line after the traffic light was red and the inspector there immediately said 
please park your car at the side and in kerala we are very law abiding people he doesn't have to shout or anything the moment he just indicated to me to park my car besides the road i parked i pulled out all my papers i went to him looking at my face he said sir you jumped the red light i said i'm sorry i was looking at the container truck he said i did realize but breaking of the law is breaking of the law knowingly or unknowingly and therefore i have to impose a fine and at that time fine for jumping parking light was uh, jumping traffic light was 500 now it is 2500 but then he asked me what's your profession i said i am a teacher by profession what kind of teacher i said i am principal of a bible college he fell from the sky he said sir you teach people not to disobey laws and today you have disobeyed knowingly or unknowingly i know you would not knowingly violate it but violation is violation and uh, therefore uh, i am imposing the minimum possible fine so instead of 500 he used his discretion and uh, find me 100 rupees did he justify me no did he declare that i was innocent no i was not innocent i crossed the traffic light red light unknowingly and knowing or unknowing is not a justification so in front of the law i became a person who paid a fine and since i paid a fine i will no longer be seen as an offender but i will surely be seen as a person who paid a fine for his offense and therefore he is a forgiven offender please remember no human authority can ever uh, declare me as righteous okay so now the difference i am sure the difference is very clear forgiveness is when a sinner is forgiven either by paying a fine or by serving a prison sentence or some kind of a punishment justification is when a competent authority declares that this person is not an offender or that this person is totally righteous now let let me remind you we all know that anybody who is born in this world is a sinner the scripture makes it very clear that all have sinned and are fallen from the glory of god or the righteousness of god or many other things of god bible is not needed to understand these things bible the scripture makes these things clear but all humans have a very clear understanding that they are sinners i was brought up in north india where my dad served the lord in madhya pradesh and that also in the chambal area chambal is one of the most violent areas in india the class in which i studied bsc first year we were about 80 students and among 80 students at least 40 students had either a knife or a pistol in his pocket it is that kind of a violent area in spite of that inherent violent in humans of chambal wherever you went in chambal you could see statements poems shlokas written on temples and even on houses in front of houses which called people to repentance which called people to go back to god which called people to uh, remember god while there is time while there is life one of them is jab tak hai zindagi fursat na milegi kaam se as long as you live you are never going to rest you are never going to rest you are never going to get free time and then the next statement was that's the most important the next was 
don't forget two things as long as you live you are not going to get fursat free time don't think that you will do these things when you get free time rather remember two things one is god and the other death why should we remember death because even non christians know that after death you will be tried it is appointed for man once to judge and then once to die and then judgment and when there is judgment will you be justified non christians know non christians know that is the reason why people invent their own methods for justification and almost all religions have come because people have the need they feel a need for justification when i was taking hindi classes i mentioned a sanyasi he came and settled in a place in front of the college where i was doing my bsc he had raised his right hand like this see right hand is that hand that we really need to do our everything in our everyday everyday life he kept his right hand raised like this and when i asked him it was some somewhere between 10 to 20 years he had raised his hand like this never lowered it and the hand had become completely dry and useless why a feeling that in front of god i need pardon and also i need forgiveness and also justification there was a sanyasi who settled in the ground in front of the house where we were living he had just a small piece of indian tie on his body the entire body was naked and some ashes he would apply all over his body even during winter he would be like that plus he stood on a single foot he stood on his left foot the right foot he had made a uh, something to catch something in which he could rest his right foot a jhula and his right foot was placed on that that way he stood day and night even during extreme north indian winters when when in gwalior the temperature used to go up to minus 4 inside the house outside it was unbearable why everybody feels a need for forgiveness and also justification everyone knows that they are sinners and they deserve punishment okay then what they also know another thing a trespasser a person who trespasses any kind of law he knows that he can easily cheat human courts we know in our own country not only in our own country all over the world worldwide there is a phenomena rich trespassers rich people who trespass they hire the most expensive lawyers and those lawyers see to it that these trespassers are left by the courts as i said i come from the most violent region in india and in that region chambal region there are many lawyers who specialize in advocating for murderers people who have committed the most serious murders and i personally know many people including some of my class fellows who committed murders and then went to these lawyers and these lawyers were very easily able to get bail for them what eventually happened to them is not the issue but they were able to get bail for them and they were able to move around in society so trespassers can easily cheat human courts 
but there is one court which they cannot escape and that is the divine court divine court will surely declare that a trespasser is a trespasser and humans know that that is another reason why there is a lifelong yearning in our hearts to get right with god and if possible get it declared by god that we are just and righteous not only are we forgiven sinners but that we are just and righteous that means we are sinless we have not done any sin now there is a problem a sinner cannot be justified a sinner can be as i repeatedly said today a sinner can be pardoned a sinner can be forgiven but a sinner cannot be justified even god cannot directly justify a sinner god can forgive see lord jesus paid the penalty of every person sin every person who was ever born and who shall ever who shall ever come to this this world lord jesus paid the penalty for their sins and god forgives all of them who come to him and says i accept lord jesus as my savior that is a straight forward thing jesus paid for the penalty of our sins and therefore when we go when we go to god and confess that i am a sinner i accept lord jesus as my savior i accept that lord jesus died for me god forgives that person instantly he will not be punished but please remember he remains a forgiven sinner not a justified person god cannot justify him he is a sinner please remember he is a sinner and therefore god cannot justify him but god does justify god does justify how that is what romans chapter 5 verse 1 says as an introduction but it doesn't give all the details god is justice and righteousness therefore after a person is forgiven he has to do something to justify that person and he has been doing that from the old testament times up to today and he shall continue to do that till all created human beings among uh, till all the saved people from among the created created humans attain salvation and we all enter new heaven and the new earth how is that possible we will go to a bit of detail later but let me remind you god has found a way and exactly how after forgiving us exactly how god justifies us it is the details of that which we should understand in much more elaborate details which i will present only later before that a bit of historical background is needed as to why this doctrine is so important as i said man can forgive but man cannot justify but even god through lord jesus he can forgive man but he cannot justify man directly because he who is a sinner he is a, 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 a even after pardon he is a forgiven sinner only he is not justified he is not innocent for that god found a method and the message of justification god gave it to all mankind our problem is most of us are aware only about new testament christianity and please remember new testament christianity is only 2000 years old there was this world 4000 years for a total of 4000 years before 
the New Testament church came. And for the last 6,000 years, God has been justifying people. And the scripture very clearly says that God has been justifying people. This message of justification was made available orally to God's people first. When we study the historical content of the Bible, it becomes clear that the message of justification was transmitted orally at first from Seth, Adam and Eve's third child, third son, Seth up to Noah. There was a continuous link. And then from Noah to Abraham, even that was orally, but there is evidence that there was much written material transmitted from generation to generation, even before the Old Testament came. We also notice that in the Old Testament, God spoke directly to people. The best example is Abraham. God called Abraham from the land of Ur. The land of Ur is now known. The city in which Abraham was born, the city in which Abraham lived is known. That was a highly pagan city. They used to worship the moon god known as Nanar. From among the moon worshippers, God chose one man and said, please go to the place which I have, which I am going to show you. He followed God and eventually the Old Testament says that Abraham believed God and it was counted unto him for righteousness. I am not going to uh, give the reference today. This is only a historical survey. But we know that in the book of uh, or the epistle of Romans, it quotes once again, Abraham believed and that was counted unto him for righteousness. Exactly how was it counted? We will come to that. Okay, so the message of justification was transmitted from the, from the Old Testament times, from the time of the first generation, Seth to Noah, Noah to Abraham, uh, through oral word and also through the written word. God also spoke to many others. But finally, as the world population exploded, it became necessary to give the message in a written form. That's the reason why God chose Israel. Israel was to be the custodian of this message. And please remember, when the Messiah came, Israel rejected the Messiah and God for a short period. By short period means already 2000 years are over. For a period, God set them away or set them apart and started a new era known as church age. From the Israel age, another seven years are left. The total number of years were mentioned. But before those years could come to a completion, God kept them aside for a period of time and brought in church. But after the church age is fulfilled, those seven years from the age of Israel, which are still left, they will be fulfilled. This I said incidentally because we always need to remember that Israel is God's chosen people. Church is God's chosen bride, Christ's bride, but Israel is God's chosen people. And therefore, we should always have a great love for Israel and we should always pray for peace in Israel. I mentioned it incidentally because due to continuous Arabic propaganda, even many brethren believers sometimes speak against Israel. I know a Bible teacher who once visited Israel for his uh, research work, came back and he started speaking against him. He started speaking in favor of Arabs. I'm not saying that you speak against Arabs, but I want to remind you, Israel is God's chosen family for preservation and transmission of the message of justification by faith. And therefore, church age believers should always pray for peace of Israel and also that God might bless and protect his people. Please remember, they occupy a place, maybe smaller than Kerala, 
and their enemies occupy so much space all around them and the enemies have sown that they will annihilate israel please never forget they are people chosen by god to preserve god's word old testament to transmit it and also to share the gospel with others which they did effectively during old testament times let us always remember and continue to pray for them so finally when the population world population increased god chose israel as custodian of this message they were supposed to preserve transmit and protect it from adulteration mingling with wrong messages they were supposed to spread this message that is why god asked jonah to go to nineveh nineveh people were assyrians assyrians were sworn enemies of israel they had done a lot of things against israel that's why jonah didn't want to go there but god forced him to go there because for so god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son while he was yet to send his son to this world even then god god loved the world and wanted everyone to come to lord jesus that's the reason why god sent jonah and jonah was an israelite a jew he should have understood that god chose my community not only to preserve the scripture but also to spread it and spread the gospel when we look into archaeology archaeology gives a lot of evidence that people of israel did take their responsibility very seriously the responsibility of spreading the word even in our own beloved india it was israelites who brought the word of god there are evidences that copies of the first five books of the bible they came to india somewhere around 600 bc so 600 before the time of christ years before the time of christ the message of god had reached india through jews those who came to india for business israel took its many israelites took the task seriously then as the world population exploded god allowed his people the israelites to write the scriptures on cheaper material so that it could be spread all over the world please excuse me if all of this historical detail becomes too heavy or boring for some of you but as i reminded in the beginning this is a bible school class and we expect you to be thorough with all these details because tomorrow when it comes to when an opportunity comes to you to speak on these things unless you know the historical backgrounds you would not be able to speak with authority the fact that i have not heard a single message on justification by faith for last 26 years i have been in kerala for 26 years in the last 26 years i have not heard a single message on justification by faith that shows that we have somehow lost our grip and in that kind of a generation unless we are thorough with the historical background and biblical background we would not be able to present it and therefore if some of the details are a little heavy for you if some of the details are a little boring please persist with me this is training this is preparation not mere bible class this is training and preparation so that tomorrow you can defend this doctrine with all authority one of the persons whom god used for giving this doctrine to us was moses moses was trained in the highest arts and crafts and science and technology of egyptians why did god 
train Moses? Why did God use Moses to write the first five books of the Bible? Because the first five books of the Bible are foundational. If you don't understand, if I don't understand the first five books of the Bible, we would never be able to understand New Testament. Hey, you may say, brother, we have never studied uh, the first five books of the Bible in great detail, but we enjoy New Testament. Uh, let me remind you, it's very, very much possible for us to be, us to enjoy things about which we have no clue. When an imbecile is taken to slaughter, till the last moment he smiles because he doesn't understand. He lives in the fool's paradise. And therefore, if we say, hey, we have, I have no idea. I, I even reject the Old Testament. I want only the New Testament. Please remember, many of us are living, literally living in the fool's paradise because we don't, we, uh, biblically, because we don't understand the connection between old and new, and therefore we do not understand the significance of the new. And therefore, often we are unable to speak with authority on fundamental doctrines. That's the reason why 26 solid years, me living in Kerala, listening to hundreds upon hundreds of messages. In one year alone, I would be listening to something like maybe 200 messages, at least 52 in the church, and then in Bible classes, and then in camps and conferences. In 26 years, I have not heard one single Bible exposition on the doctrine of justification by faith. And before I go further, let me ask you, brothers and sisters, if you think that I am exaggerating, let me ask you, this is the key doctrine on which the Brethren movement stands. Six people separated themselves and start, had a worship at Kumbhanad. Why? It was not for celebrating Lord's Supper. It was because they understood the doctrine of justification by faith. Similarly, there were worships in Kotarakara area, Elandur area, Trishur area, Palanyi area, approximately at the same time. Why? They all understood. They may not have understood all the theology and all the history, but they understood that justification is by faith. And today we don't even hear about that doctrine. That's because we have lost our authority. And why have we lost our authority? Because we don't study it. We want too many devotions. As I, I said in one of the classes, originally it was 15-minute devotions. Then it became 10-minute devotions. Then 5-minute devotions. 1-minute devotions. Please remember, that's the reason why the church is weak. If your child wants only toffee, only lollipop, no food, how many of you would allow him to go that way. We would not. In our spiritual life, we prefer to spend our life with lollipop, ignoring the meat of God's word. I gave this background. I, I, I diverted purposely for a few minutes to remind you, please have a good grip over this doctrine and please start teaching this doctrine because a number of False cults are creeping into our assemblies and they are snatching away our young people because we do not teach this doctrine. Had the young people understood this doctrine, many of them would not have fallen into the clutches of these false cults. God used Moses to write this doctrine for the first time. Those five books, Moses actually wrote six books. The book of Job was also written by Moses. Job speaks about God's divine and sovereign control and a believer's response. The doctrinal portion comes in the first five books. We have to understand those books thoroughly. And we can understand the doctrine of justification of faith thoroughly only if we understand those five books. And to write those five books, God used the most qualified person in his generation. 
Moses studied for 40 years approximately to become the prince and eventually the pharaoh of Egypt which meant that he had to be proficient in more than one language he also was proficient in his own language which had three different kinds of scripts our languages have only one kind of a script english has two capital and lower cases egyptian language had three and he had to be fluent in all three and because he was trained to become the pharaoh of egypt he had access to all kind of writing material he also had access to a lot of literature libraries and then god used him to write the first five books of the bible there was a a question has come to me thank you very much jis for the question and the question is uh, are abraham and job contemporary from historical references found in the book of job about the land uz in which he lived and also from cultural references in the book of job it seems that job was a contemporary of abraham but he lived in a di- slightly different place that also reminds to us that even before god's word came in written form god spoke to people uh, everywhere okay then uh, about moses let us come back to moses the message of justification by faith was given in written form for the first time when the first five books of the bible came but then since it is such a fundamental and essential doctrine as the scripture progressed as the 39 books of the old testament were written down this doctrine of justification by faith was elaborated more and more and more the book of psalms contains many statements which are elaboration on the doctrine of justification by faith the last portion of the book of isaiah which many of us very prayerfully avoid reading actually that last portion contains one of the most detailed expositions of justification by faith and then when we come to new testament romans contains many passages related to justifications galatians not only romans and galatians actually the doctrine of justification is mentioned throughout the new testament it is so important and it is given in such an elaborate detail because of that i mentioned epistles you may say you may ask hey brother did john, lord jesus say anything about uh, justification and the answer is lord repeatedly mentioned justification and one of the classic examples is the story of the pharisee and the tax collector now in our society a tax collector is a normal human being just like me and you and therefore when the scripture speaks about tax collectors or uh, in the old translation when the scripture speaks about publicans many of us are unable to understand why they were hated by romans and therefore a few words about them is essential as part of a bible school training romans went throughout the world and ruled the world a substantial portion of the world they were very very cunning people so rather than collecting taxes directly they would appoint their own people to collect taxes collection of taxes was given to people through auction so there would be an auction so zacchaeus would come matthew would come 
and many other tax collectors would come so the romans would say these are the four areas for which we are now going to appoint tax collectors how much you would collect so matthew would say i would collect a million denarius zacchaeus would say a million uh 11 lakh a million is 10 lakh i would gather 11 lakh so matthew says i'll collect 12 lakh this way there was an auction and the person who collected who who would bid for the maximum amount was made the tax collector now that the tax collector was directly under the authority of rome he was like a magistrate he could arrest anybody he could imprison anybody so these tax collectors would go and announce house to house how much each household has to give and he would employ gundas and rascals and rogues to gather this money so if this fellow had promised a million denarius to romans he would collect at least 5 million or even 10 million he would give 1 million to the roman government he would also bribe people who would come for inspection but he will he would keep the rest as he sold dirty black money some of this money would uh, go to all these rogues and rascals and gundas who whom he was using to gather money so these tax collectors were rogues who would exploit their people who would speak lies to romans who would who would make a lot of black money that's the reason why jews hated them number one jews hated a foreign government over them and now their own people they were receiving authority from the fo- foreign government behaving like magistrates imprisoning anybody any time if he was unable to pay a tax but history shows us new testament records show us that from time to time there were tax collectors who understood that i am a serious sinner i am an offender to my own people i am also an offender in front of god that's the background okay now a pharisee was a fellow who thought that he was more righteous than god so a pharisee goes to the temple a tax collector goes to the temple and the pharisee looks to heaven lord jesus very clearly says that he looked up and says lord i am this 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 goes back but there is no hope there is no forgiveness no justification in his life but lord himself made it very clear the tax collector he was so full of his guilt exploiting his own people for a foreign government and making so uh, committing so many crimes against god's own chosen people he stands in a corner he doesn't have the courage to look up he beats his chest and says god have forgiveness on me and please remember to check the verses lord says that he went back justified so when it comes to the doctrine of justification by faith genesis mentions it all the old testament books mention it all the new testament books mention it including lord jesus in his teaching it is such an important doctrine and it is for such an important doctrine that a church split into two 550 years ago today most of us don't even know what protestant movement was most of us do not know how many tens of thousands of people were murdered for one doctrine and that is doctrine of justification by faith it is so important 
Lord willing, we will pick up from here. Our historical portion is over. And at the most, what I'm going to mention is uh, the Protestant Reformation because Protestant Reformation was a period when a lot of people gave their lives for uh, their belief in this doctrine and that is doctrine of justification by faith. And today we are so blessed and so comfortable that we don't even know what this doctrine means. It is so embarrassing. It is so shocking. And we pride ourselves that we brethren, we are custodians of the doctrines of God. If you have ever felt that you are a custodian. If I have ever felt that I am a custodian, we need to ask ourselves, do we understand the fundamental doctrine on which the brethren church or brethren movement stands? Have we taught this doctrine? It's our responsibility to do so. Uh, after this class is over, that means this series is over. Uh, I hope to get time to uh, release a fresh edition of the book known as Justification by Faith. Uh, the book is uh, available in Malayalam and also in English. And uh, it is uh, Dr. Sanish Chiryan and I who authored this book about 20 years ago. And several thousand copies were distributed in Kerala because at that time both of us felt that the ignorance is doing much harm to our people. Uh, I hope to be releasing a revised edition of that. Uh, uh, originally, it was a printed book. I hope to uh, release a revised electronic edition in Malayalam and also in English. Dear friends, I am confident that you enjoyed listening to this question answer video by Dr. Johnson C. Philip. He would love to get your questions. Please post your questions in the comment box below this video and he will prepare a video reply for you. Please post only one question at a time, and make it as detailed as possible so that Dr. Philip has no problem in understanding exactly what you mean. Also, please encourage this ministry by subscribing to this channel. Below this video, there is a subscribe button. Please click it. Also please click the bell icon near it to complete the process of subscribing. Thank you very much for being such an encouragement to our channel.